guys, this is Seth from the RE Tipster blog and today I want to talk to you about a little hidden cost that can definitely have an impact on your bottom line if you're a rental property owner. And those things look something like this. Now let's get into it. Alright, so if you own rental properties in a city like I do where the local utility company doesn't make it all that easy to switch the water bill from tenant to tenant when people move in and out. And for the most part, it usually just makes more sense for the property owner themselves to pay that bill. It's a cost you're definitely gonna have to consider when you think about just your overall income and expenses. And it's a cost that can be kind of high, especially if you live in a, in a city where the cost of water is high and or if you have appliances in your house that consume tons and tons of water. And especially if your property was built in the early 90s or 80s or 70s or prior to that, which accounts for a lot of properties out there, there's a fair chance there's some pretty old faucets and toilets and shower heads in those buildings that were just designed long before anybody cared about water efficiency. And one of those things we're gonna talk about first is the toilet. And back in the 70s and prior to that, toilets consumed anywhere from three to five gallons per flush. I mean, they just used tons and tons of water. And the toilets that are designed today are much more efficient. And the one in particular that I have used in all my rental properties and have installed in every house I've ever lived in is called the Toto Drake. And Toto is a Japanese toilet manufacturer that just, I think, does probably the best job of any toilet company out there. Part of what I love about these toilets is that pretty much everything across their line doesn't clog. They're just designed in such a way that you can flush just about anything down here short of a newspaper or a telephone book. If there's anything any landlord or property manager does not like, it's getting up at three in the morning to go unclog toilets. That's like one of the big nightmares everybody talks about. And you can really avoid all of that if you just get a good toilet that doesn't clog. Another great thing about these toilets is that these things are designed to consume very, very little water. This one that I've got here, the Toto Drake, has been out for several years now. And this is a 1.6 gallon per flush toilet. But the thing to keep in mind is there's actually two flush modes on this toilet. If you just hit the lever one time and release it, it's actually only gonna use about half of the tank's water which comes out to about 0.8 gallons. And if you push it and hold it, then it's gonna use the full tank of 1.6 gallons. So really, in a lot of ways, this toilet is just designed to only use as much water as is absolutely necessary. And Toto has actually come out with an even newer version of this toilet that only uses 1.28 gallons per flush. I haven't used that one yet, but I've seen it in stores, and it, it seems to be just as good as this one, if not better. So Toto makes a round version of this toilet, which is great for Older houses that have really, really tiny bathrooms that can hardly fit anything in there. That's probably the one you're gonna wanna use for a really small bathroom with not a lot of space. Or if you got a bigger bathroom like this one I'm in right here, the elongated version is awesome. The Toto Drake is just an amazing toilet. It's reasonably priced, it's not terribly expensive, and it does an awesome job, both in terms of flushing and not clogging, and also in terms of just not using a lot of water. The next thing I wanna tell you about is this faucet here from Delta. And this particular faucet uses only 1.5 gallons per minute if you just turn it on and leave it on. And a lot of the older faucets out there use way, way more than this. I mean, they're just ridiculous water consumers. And the nice thing about this particular faucet, and really any faucet that only uses 1.5 gallons a minute, is that when you turn it on to wash your hands or brush your teeth or do whatever you're trying to do, you'll notice that it actually doesn't make a huge difference whether you're getting seven gallons a minute or 1.5 gallons a minute because you really don't need a ton of water for all those things. So as long as you don't need it, you might as well not use it. Something else I love about this faucet is that it's really pretty cheap. It's not a terribly expensive item. To be fair, I will say that this faucet is built a little cheap too. There's a lot of plastic parts in it. But with that said, I've had this faucet in my house now for seven years and we use it a lot every single day and I've had absolutely no problems with it to date. So while it is built a little on the cheap end and the cost is cheap, I don't really think it's a problem. Unless you're hitting this thing with a hammer, in my experience, it's not something that's just gonna break on you because of the cheap factor. All right, now the next thing I wanna show you is this shower head here from a company called Evolve. And I just discovered the shower head a couple years ago. It's pretty cool. 
Basically, there's two unique things about it. First of all, it only uses 1.5 gallons per minute, which actually isn't that unique. That's a pretty common thing for a lot of these low flow shower heads. But what makes this one so unique is the fact that when you turn it on, and you know, when you turn on a shower, you're typically waiting for like 30 seconds or a minute or even two minutes for warm water to start coming through. Well, what this does is once the warm water starts coming, it will shut off and then you have to pull this thing to keep it going again. So basically, a lot of people, if they turn the shower on and they leave for five minutes and all this water is being wasted during that time, it's not gonna happen with this. And you can actually buy just this little mechanical piece. If you have a different shower head and you wanna integrate this little feature into your existing shower, you can do that. And when you think about it, all the showers everybody takes and all the water that's wasted when people are waiting for the water to warm up, that can be pretty substantial. And the shower of everything in the house is probably what consumes the most water, depending on what kind of shower head you're using and how long of a shower you're taking. So this particular one could be a pretty big money saver over the long run. Two other things I'll note just as it relates to shower heads in general, it's really fairly easy for a tenant to take this thing and just switch it out for a new one. So I'd say of all the things that run the risk of the tenant just overriding your decision and picking something else to use, this is probably the easiest for them to do. They just have to unscrew it and put a new one on. So that's always a risk. However, if the tenant does use this and they're okay with it, or if they just don't know how to switch a shower head, this thing can be a huge, huge money saver. Something else I'll note is that I've got three bathrooms in my house and this thing is only in one of those three bathrooms. I typically use a 2.5 gallons per minute shower head from Delta for most of my normal showers every day. So that's kind of the water flow that I'm used to. And whenever I use this one, I will say that I do notice that there's less water coming out. However, I do know that in a lot of the units I've been in, a lot of times the shower heads that I kind of inherit with the property are pretty terrible anyway. Like they're clogged up and they're not working correctly. So if you're coming from something like that, this will be an upgrade anyway. But if you've got a tenant who has a shower head that, you know, is normally consuming seven gallons a minute or something like that, they're probably gonna notice a difference with this. But at the same time, it's not like it's not enough water to do the job. I think most reasonable people would be fine for this. And if you are worried about that kind of thing, Evolve does make two other models of this. One is 1.75 gallons per minute, and another one is two gallons per minute. So if you think water flow is a big concern of yours or whoever your tenant is, uh, feel free to use one of those higher flowing models and that should probably do the trick. Now the last one I'll mention here, I don't actually have this one in my house as of right now, but I did have this exact faucet in the previous house I lived in a few years ago. And I can tell you from experience, this thing is an awesome faucet and it's very, very inexpensive. It's called the Delta Foundations Single Handle Kitchen Faucet, and it uses 1.8 gallons per minute. This thing is built like a rock. It's mostly metal. There are some plastic pieces inside, but it really is just built to last. And they even have an attachment you can include on the nozzle of this faucet, which restricts the flow down to 1.5 gallons per minute. If you really wanna get the most efficiency you can possibly get, this attachment is not expensive, and it's, uh, it's just an, a really easy thing to include on the end of it if you want to. The thing I love about Delta faucets is that their stuff is built pretty decent, and they're used in a lot of places. I've seen these kinds of faucets in gas stations, in hardware stores. I mean, people use these things long and hard and they really hold up. When you consider how much water you can save with these things, it's fairly easy to get your return on investment back from them pretty quickly. All right, so after you've seen my suggestions on some good water efficient plumbing fixtures that you can use in your properties, something you might be asking yourself is, does it make sense financially to invest the money in these fixtures when You've already got working ones in each one of your properties. Does it make sense to buy new toilets and new faucets and new shower heads? And you know, I, I don't think there's any one right answer to that, but when I was making that decision, I took a good look at my annual water bill that I was paying for each one of my properties each year. And I also took a look at the current fixtures that was in there. And I had lots of toilets that were the three to five gallon per flush toilets. A lot of the faucets were the really old kind that put out just tons and tons of water. And for me, it was a fairly simple decision to 
basically just make the call and say, I'm gonna invest the money now and realize that going forward, my annual water bill is probably gonna be about two thirds of what it was in the past. Because of all the water, I most likely will be saving. And again, things like showers are a little hard to measure because it depends on how long people take showers for and whether or not they switch out the shower heads on their own. But things like toilets, kitchen faucets, bathroom faucets, those things are pretty difficult and expensive to remove and people are most likely just gonna stick with, with what they've got. The way I figured it was that it would take me a total of about four years for me to get all of the savings back to pay for all of these new fixtures. And then every subsequent year after that, I'd be saving about three to 400 bucks per property per year. So when you consider the long-term savings and the money that I was both figuratively and literally flushing down the toilet simply by having old outdated appliances in each one of my units, uh, it was really a pretty straightforward decision to just say, hey, let's put the money in now and uh, bite the bullet and then we'll enjoy the benefit of this in the years to come. If you're looking at the properties that you own and if you've already got a lot of faucets and shower heads and toilets that are doing okay, per perhaps they're not the most wasteful kind out there or they're sitting at two gallons per minute or 1.8 gallons per minute, then it probably doesn't make a lot of sense financially speaking. And something else to also consider is the cost of water in the area where your properties are located. I'm sitting here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and honestly, compared to the rest of the country, the cost of water is not that bad. We've got Great Lakes all around us. Someone in my situation is gonna have to wait a little bit longer to see that return on investment because the costs aren't through the roof here. But if my properties were in an area with a much higher cost of water, it would be even easier to justify this investment because with that higher cost, it would be that much faster that I would realize the savings that came as a result of me putting the money into these new fixtures in the first place. For what it's worth, that's my take on some of the better plumbing fixtures that I've found out there. These have worked really good for me. I'm not saying there's not other ones out there that are probably just as good because there probably are, but these are the ones that I've tried and tested for years now and I've been really happy with all of them. I'm gonna include affiliate links to each one of these items beneath this video, so if you wanna go check them out, feel free to do that and I will get a small commission from that if you decide to buy something. You can buy most of these items from a site like Amazon or there's another website called HomeClick that I've used to buy several of these things for myself in the past and I've found they've actually got even better deals in some cases. Um, so feel free to check that out too. I'll have, I'll have links to them as well. I, I hope you found that helpful and somewhat informative and if you decide to uh, move forward with any improvements to the plumbing fixtures at your place, feel free to use any of these suggestions and I think, uh, I think you'll be pretty satisfied with it. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.